Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, this very special Adelaide Fringe uh, professional development session. My name is Andy Beecroft. I'm the Marketplace Manager for Honeypot. And before we begin, I'd just like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands on which I'm speaking today, the Ghana people, and I pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging and extend my respects to any First Nations peoples watching uh, today. Uh, so we have a session called Investing in Your Season Ahead, and we're joined today by four excellent speakers who will bring their wisdom, knowledge, and experience to this uh, session that will help you kind of get prepared uh, prior to, during, and afterwards. Uh, so joining us today, we have Steve Mayhew, the Program Manager for Theatre Royale in Tasmania, uh, Georgia Degora, director of Yuck Circus. Uh, David Lampard, the creative director of That Science Gang. And Isabel Marmion, the festival director of Festival of Voices in Tasmania. Um, I'll just throw it over to you guys. Just um, let the audience know a little bit more about who you are and where you're from. So Steve, tell us a bit more. Hi, um, I'm eight months young into my uh, position as program manager here at the Theatre Royal in uh, Hobart. Um, and uh, But I've been around the traps for the last 25 years. Um, <laughs> um, either being involved in fringes a long, long time ago as an artist or as a producer, as a delegate at Honeypot. Um, my practice is uh, producing, um, presenting, uh, programming with a little bit of creative flair along the side. Excellent. Thanks, Steve. Uh, Georgia, over to you, please. Good morning, everybody. Um, coming for you from Yari country, up at the top of WA in Broome. I'm an independent artist and producer, and my main shtick is Yuck Circus. So we're an all-female circus company, kind of like a self-proclaimed pack of galahs that are all about uh, smashing stereotypes and kicking art in the face. So we'll be presenting at Fringe this year, but also you'll see me kicking around Honeypot um, for a couple of the shows that I'm producing. Fantastic. Thanks, George, for joining us. Uh, David, let me know a little bit more about who you are and where you're from. Yeah, sure. Um, my name is David Lampard. I'm ex-Adelaide and live in Melbourne now. I'm the uh, creative director of That Science Gang, and we create science theatre for uh, family audiences, for schools, as well as for um, general public audiences. Um, science theatre, um, unique storytelling, science-infused, um, high-concept theatre um, that we um, create and tour nationally. Great. Thanks, David. Uh, Isabel, finally, just let us know who you are, please. Hello, uh, I am the new festival director of Festival Voices, which is a singing festival based in Tasmania. Um, we have like a big choir program, a, a contemporary program and a community singing program um, is our focus. And I have um, participated in Honeypot as a, a delegate for quite a few years now. Um, and I also have a background as a, a fringe artist. I've been performing in fringe shows for about a decade. Um, yeah, so both kind of sides of things. Wonderful. Uh, excellent. So well, I think we, we can all agree we've got a wealth of knowledge and experience uh, today. And uh, I definitely think we're going to pick away at some really interesting um, kinds of uh, bits of advice and tips and, and what to do during your season ahead. And this is very much about, um, yes, as I say, investing in your season ahead by taking part in Adelaide Fringe and Honeypot and what that means in terms of bringing your work here, um, what you can kind of look to achieve, how to engage in the industry program and essentially what you can do uh, through Honeypot and through Adelaide Fringe to really sort of invest in taking your work uh, outside of Fringe uh, and prolonging the life cycle of it um uh, after after the season has ended so i guess maybe the um maybe the first question maybe might be for the for the artists in the in the room is um i guess if you maybe just let us know sort of why do you kind of participate in la fringe and the honeypot and what's the sort of um the value for you in terms of presenting work here and uh, maybe start with you georgia hello um great question i feel like 
you know, it's leading up to fringe. You're like, why am I spending all this money? And like, why am I going over? I mean, for me, it's interstate and bringing a whole crew and it's such a risky season, but it's like for me with Adelaide compared to other fringe festivals, maybe around the nation is literally with honey pot and the fact that people come in both like uh nationally and internationally into adelaide keen to see work like it's a very rich marketplace not only for presenters like seeing your work but also for yourself as a producer or an artist learning i guess like the tools of the trade um coming from broom we don't have <laughs> anyone who does this kind of work or does these side of workshops it's every uh everyone's Kind of for themselves like learning along the way and, and sharing with each other so the fact that i could come to a festival and literally have a crash course like a month long not only meeting people but learning everything on the way like it's so important for myself as an artist um, but also just for my work and and the growth of it oh yeah that sounds good david what about yourself is there any um is there any sort of um anything to add to that yeah, sure. Look, we we use Fringe and Honeypot for a variety of different reasons. And and Fringe, of course, for us is to, it's become very much our way of testing out a new show, putting it in front of an audience, getting eyes on the show, working out what works, what doesn't work, um, and um, being able to d d develop that. It's a great space. It's a big, big Fringe festival. So you have a great pool for audience. The Honeypot process began for us in 2019, so we're pretty new to it. Um, when we sort of began producing for, for Fringe again, we learned how to produce theatre on a national scale through the Honeypot program. So that was my introduction to, to all of the people working around Australia. And in 2019, it was the international um, delegates who were coming in as well. Um, and as a newbie, I learned the whole process to be able to have conversations, to sit in rooms, to um, to go to as many meetings as I possibly could and make those connections um, and to discover what this, this process of national touring is and how our company could fit into that um, and be valued in the, in the marketplace. So yeah, Honeypot's incredible. It's nothing like it in Australia. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, I guess it's just, it, is, it is unique in, in, the, in the aspect that there's not many festivals that have a industry marketplace attached to them and I guess um yeah it's very sort of important to sort of recognize that you know the the industry that come here um find the value in um taking part by having the opportunity to see a show in front of a, an audience to gauge its suitability um immediately um through through their through their participation and I guess they're also kind of benefited that that ability to connect to the artists and the creatives through various events and uh, applications that we have through the marketplace and we we do, we do tend to you know attract over 300 industry delegates from around the world each year and they might be festival programmers or producers or theaters or venues uh, or tour bookers or agents so the the variety of industry in correlation to the variety of, of fringe uh, events is 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 very uh, eclectic and engaging and I guess it's really interesting to sort of hear how um, individual delegates really approach Adelaide and, and Honeypot so maybe um, Isabel like what's your um, what's your kind of like participation uh, and, and role in Honeypot and why, why do you engage in it? So I, um, I definitely think the primary focus is obviously programming but I, I kind of want to there are two aspects to that as far as I'm concerned. There's sort of an immediate, you know, this show would be great for the festival. We can buy in this show situation. But also, I think it's really valuable to engage with artists who maybe potentially their current work isn't necessarily perfect for you, but you can kind of see perhaps their next one could be. So it's a really good networking opportunity as well to create long relationships to potentially work with artists down the line. So I think it's good uh, twofold for it, for that sort of thing. Um, and honestly, another reason that I participate is the networking opportunities between delegates and generally across the industry with, with artists. I think it's really useful to be across what is happening industry-wide and what people are talking about and making and and creating in a way that is both relevant to my immediate role and also kind of just more broadly relevant to 
getting a little temperature check on the industry, I think. Yeah, sounds good. And Steve, I guess you you participated in, in Honeypot in, in numerous roles over the years in different guises and different different roles. What's your approach, and why do you find Adelaide and, and Honeypot a, a key point of your um, programming year? I think each time that I've approached Honeypot has been through my current position at the time. Uh, whether I was a creative producer at Country Arts SA. I would often be at Honeypot talking about regional touring. Um, now that I'm uh, the program manager at Theatre Royal in Hobart, I would I would suspect that my uh, approach would be very similar to Isabel's, which is what can I program immediately? And when I say immediately, in the next 12 to 18 months, actually post 12 to 18 months, because that's how far ahead we, we are actually thinking about. Um, um, but also sort of what is on the horizon for some of those artists? Uh, what is on the horizon for some of the artists that you haven't seen for ages and want to know what's what's going on? Um, so it but it's also a really great opportunity to possibly make the connection. When I say make the connection, not only to something that I'm doing, but maybe someone's doing something that someone else might want to know about. And so, that's a wealth of information that you can pass on and connect other people to other people. Yeah. And I think you've, you've nailed, the, nailed it on the head there. It's, it's the connection in a way. And I guess making those viable and kind of engaging connections is something you can do, not only lead up to presenting work here in Adelaide, but also during and afterwards. Um, so I suppose maybe it, it's really interesting to hear like how Georgia and David approach presenting work here in Adelaide. What's your kind of rationale when you kind of look to register an event here and thinking about the market and whether that work is right for Honeypot? Is there a difference between presenting work here in Adelaide as opposed to other um, events that you might do? <laughs> Adelaide, Adelaide is that that great market where you can connect with so many different types of people. I think you know, and especially the Honey Pot as well, um, as opposed to various festivals or other um, uh, presentations that you get in theatres around around Australia or around the world. Is it's it's a one off situation. It's a collection of people at those venues. Whereas you know, Fringe, you've got so many opportunities to have conversations with so many different people. Um, the thing I was going to say before was, you know, Honeypot for me wasn't just about connecting with um, other presenters, but very much about connecting with other people in the industry as well. It's the way that we got our agent um, and were able to talk to a couple of different agencies before we settled on um, uh, NCM for us, which best suited our needs um, and also best suited where we were heading with the company as well. But also talking with other artists, uh, with other performers um, who might suit projects that you have coming up. It's just such a big pool of people in so many different positions um, that it's it's not just about for me it's not just about getting that gig somewhere um, but finding out about um, arts markets um, you know that was something I didn't know about the first the first honeypot we did we basically just entered honeypot because it was one of those boxes to tick um, and went okay let's see what this is um, and that's how we got invited to present at Showcase Victoria or got the invitation to apply to um, to present at Showcase Victoria, which I didn't know about at the time. I didn't know that these arts markets existed. So, so there's so much beyond, um, there's so many things you can get out of the Honeypot um, situation that you can't necessarily get out of going out and doing a, a gig in regional Victoria um, or, um, you know, a small festival somewhere. This is lots of opportunities. Yeah, yeah. I think in a similar vein, yeah, I definitely put on my like industry hustle hat for Adelaide. So it's like, it's kind of weird to say it, but it's like less about presenting your show. I mean, like it's maybe not less, but it's like the the networking and the industry connection is greater than presenting the show compared to any other festival or event. So it's still yeah. prioritizing your audience and your show, but it's a tool for you to be there and still be presenting work that people can see, but it's just, yeah, you gotta have that hustle on and not only meet people that might be your peers, but across the industry. And similar to what um, Steve was saying of just like, 
meeting people that might not be your cup of tea, but you could be somebody else's cup of tea, or you could be their cup of tea when they change jobs in six months or, you know, whatever it may be. Um, everyone's kind of moving and shaking at the moment. So it's just good to be there and be known, especially after we've had so many years of, you know, lockdowns and isolation. It's like we at Yuck are definitely all about um, kind of putting our hand up this year and being like, we're back. Remember yeah. us. We're ready to tour. So uh, <laughs> just <laughs> kind of having that as your kind of mindset is something that we prioritize with this festival more than anywhere else. Yeah. Yeah. And I, it, there's a three month lead in time as well, I guess, from when we start to open applications in, in Honeypot. So, I mean, the program launched on the 6th of December uh, and the event finder is now live from the 7th of December. And then we launched the, um, the delegate finder on the 20th of January uh, and then the passion pitches on the 23rd of January. So there is that sort of period of time that you have in order to sort of prepare and connect so that's not just the the artists also the the delegates as well they have a, an extended period of time to really dig into the program so um yeah I just I'm really interested to sort of understand sort of how uh Steve and Isabel sort of approach that timeline and what's your kind of um sort of preparation time and um research time looking like uh once once the program's launched Isabel I'm um, a little bit psychotic about this, um, to be honest. I'm surprising to anyone who actually knows me, um, but I I get so excited when a program is is launched. Um, it, it's Christmas Day for me, functionally, <laughs> and so I, I tend to go through the whole the whole thing, absolutely the whole program, and I'll make multiple lists, which are kind of like you know shows I absolutely need to see, shows I would like to see shows that I would like to see that are not relevant to me professionally but I think will be fun unfortunately this list tends to get dropped off because I get busier and busier so it's hard to prioritize hijinks during fringe um so I so I do that and, and then I make a very very I, I I read all about kind of the shows all the information that I can see about the shows and I just make a very detailed <laughs> calendar that's very full and I try and build in some gaps because I know that during Fringe I'm going to be meeting people um, and shows that I have maybe not been so convinced on I could meet someone and and, and they could absolutely be like yeah it, it's actually this is the vibe and I'll be like oh man that does sound amazing so I'll have to fit that in as well so it's really kind of a lot of research and a lot of scheduling um it's it's great it's great fun as well it's so good seeing all of the projects that everyone's been working on um all the shows and and getting to to do a really detailed dive into that um yeah I know that some people tend to uh, can be more casual I don't know what your method is Steve but I tend to be fairly militant in my approach to Honeypot. And I guess when you've got 1200 shows to go through it, it can take a bit of time. It's uh, a lot of shows yeah <laughs> you don't want to miss yeah. anyone you yeah, have yeah. to miss someone unfortunately there's too many shows it's too big but yeah. And Steve what, what's your sort of take and rationale on, on sort of approaching Honeypot and Fringe? prior to it starting in February? It's a little bit practical um, because I live interstate um, and I've only got one week uh, to be in Adelaide um, and that is a window of opportunity for me to see things that I could be interested in in programming. Um, and so if it's appearing in that week, great. If it's not... I'm sorry, but at the same time, maybe that t type of uh, show would go on a list for me to follow up later on down the track. Um, I think, so So I sort of really try and find out what's on when I'm there yeah. um, and then try and then whittle down what really am I looking for? Um, and it's not about what I'm liking. It's actually about, I'm thinking a lot about audiences. Um, and the audiences that currently go to uh, the Theatre Royal, but also audiences that could be coming to the Theatre Royal. And how do I 
start building bridges between what we're currently programming and what we could be programming in uh, in uh, 12 to 24 months down the track. Um, and so there's that's sort of where I'm, that's where my head goes. Um, and and again, like Isabel, I'd start making a list and trying to trying to find and see as much as I can that sort of fits into the, that sort of framework that I've just described. I think it's worth um, noting as well, like, you know, Steve is only in Adelaide for a week. I am lucky enough to be based here, so I'll be around for the whole print. Um, but, you know, each of us are just one person. Most organisations will only have one to three people participating in the honeypot at the most. Um, there's a limit as to what we can physically go and see, but that doesn't mean that we haven't noted the show. Like, come and have a conversation with us. Email us. If you email me to invite me to come and see the show, I'm a lot more likely to go just because I'll, uh, because there's, it's been kind of brought to my attention that this is an artist who's who's considering you don't email indiscriminately email like appropriate organizations but um you know and and if that doesn't happen during the fringe any follow-up follow-up with video footage perfection great we love it yeah and in those uh, in those in that in that time between um event finder opening and delegate finder opening um, and browsing the program and browsing event finder do you also kind of contact artists before you see their show or do you wait until kind of you've you've had a chance to see them and meet them I would wait personally I don't know what Steve would do I would wait but I'm but I'm happy to be contacted by artists if they want to talk in advance yeah I I sort of lead I allow the artist to lead with their work um, I, I end up knowing a lot more people that way because if I'm, uh, if, if I, if I'm interested in the work and I find the work suitable, then I will follow up the conversation. Um, and then a connection has been made and then the possibility of either that work or something in the future might happen. Um, so it's that, uh, yeah, be, be confident and lead with your work, I think. <laughs> Which is a great segue to exactly what um, comes prior to the season starting. It's that presentation of the work and the information to hand. And I'm just going to share my screen because I think it's really useful to kind of just get an idea of what applications open through the AVR. Um, and the first thing to open would be um, would be the event finder. So the event finder, as you can see on the screen here, is a list of all the uh, Honeypot registered shows taking part in Adelaide Fringe each season. So um, it's really useful for both the delegates and the artists to kind of get an overview of what's been presented. And they can search things by genre or by the origin of the work or the premiere status. Um, so essentially, this is kind of the first touch point in a way, other than the, um, other than the program itself. And for this, this is more sort of tangible information that programmers and delegates can kind of really use to kind of drill down into what the work is and it's kind of touring app applications as well. So I'm going to use playback as an example here. Um, so, you know, we, we were presented with the information about the work and um, also we're given kind of the touring party details. Um, and more importantly, the sort of unique selling points um, um, and considerations and special requirements for the work, which is kind of quite useful for, for industry delegates to really sort of be aware of um, when they're sort of preparing their their, their, their bookings um, and potentially looking at onward programming. Um, so yeah, this is really, uh, as, as Stephen Isabel said, it's really about getting the information across um, in a sort of very detailed and alluring manner. Um, and I guess this is really where you can invest in the lead up to Fringe as artists. So I'll just stop sharing my screen now. As I said, yeah, it's about the presentation of information. So um, Event Finder is something you can do as artists 
to kind of really um, capture the uh, excitement and imagination of a pro programmer. So I guess like it's interesting. I mean, Georgia and David, how do you um, approach um, the information that you put in your event finder profile versus the information that goes in the public facing registration profile? Georgia, what would you say was most important there? I think just consider who you're talking to. So it's like presenters or, you know, delegates or whoever may be looking are looking for, I guess, like the logistics more than your like artistic cell. So they're looking at your profile because they either already know about you or they want to know more about you. It's not like um, you have to do the whole branding, like welcome to our fun, pop, whatever. Um, it's more about being like, okay, well, this is, you know, the touring logistics and like this is kind of like why your audiences might like it rather than like why you might like it. Um, so it's just focusing on, it's not so much like selling to them, but just being realistic about your product and um, just anything that you might need a flag uh, for yourself or for them to know um, before kind of going down that process together. <clears throat> Yeah, David, what, you, what, what what's your take on it as well? What yeah. do you think is important to be aware of when representing yourself through the event finder? Yeah, it, I think the biggest thing that I learned through this process too was that be open with what your project is. Don't hide anything. Don't. It's not the the blurb that you use to sell to the audience to say, "Hey, come along. It's exciting because of and it's you're going to discover this." And it's more about this is what you'll see. This is what we do in the show. This is the the nuts and bolts of it. Here's how we bump in. Here's how we bump out. You know, it takes this amount of time. This is the touring party. Um, because that's going to give a sense of cost. It's going to give a sense of time. It's going to give a sense of where that might fit into a presenter's program and how it's going to um, present to an audience. So it's it's about being incredibly transparent um, about what that experience is that the audience is going to get. Yeah. And I guess those sorts of unique selling points and special considerations and touring party, party details really kind of important to sort of uh, present um, in a way that's understandable um, and is also clear to the to the delegate. Is Isabel and, and Steve, um, in terms of the event finder for, for Honeypot, what, what aspects on those pages do you find most important for yourself, Isabel? Yeah, definitely. I, I will really echo what um both Georgia and David have said like clarity is really key like you don't need to give me a razzle dazzle sell I, I want to know what's going on um sometimes in quite a, a, a frank way um it, it's just really helpful to know not only if if you're right for me but also if I'm right for you if I can't support the show in, a, in an adequate way better that I know that sooner rather than later um I think sometimes there can be a situation where an artist is really gunning to get a work into a particular place and, and can be a little hazy about what the work actually needs um which ultimately does the work a disservice and doesn't help the artist so I, I think clarity um is is really helpful so that kind of information is good yeah, I guess those those touring uh, details and requirements is quite important to put across clearly as well. I think yeah. it's you know to limit the work by saying it can go anywhere and it, we we can do it any in any place. Yes, might sound very like easy and accessible to yourself, but actually to a delegate, they're not really that clear, you know, about what you need. And it's not to say that your special requirements are going to limit your, your possibility of being, being picked up. It actually might engage someone in a more proactive way. Would, would you agree, Steve? Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> give, uh, it's that old adage, I think, it, it, where, you know, if, if there's no framework or if there's no boundaries, then it's nothing, you know, it's not defined. And... And I think it's really important for the artist and the producer there in, in this instance to help define uh, what we're looking at, 
Um, yes, we might be able to see other things um, in that uh, framework or in that definition, but it's probably really good to start with your own definition of, and and your your defining parameters of what it is, who it's for, and and how it can be presented. Um, and then comes the conversation uh, about whether any of that is adaptable or for everyone. Um, the last thing I want to hear is that it's for a general audience. Um, yes, uh, the general audience will eventually come, but actually quite often I'm thinking about quite specific audiences. Um, and I think what's really handy around what I think you're trying to, what Honeypot is doing, is that think of it as a little bit of a ramp um, uh, from Event Finder and the presenter packs and the pas passion pitches. You know, like there, there is information for the presenter or the programmer that you really need to define and well define. And then, and then there's information that you need to give us that make us think about our audiences or think about the audience experience. Um, because as soon as I find out what the audience experience is, is and I think that my audience might enjoy that, then you've sort of made that link and connection and then I can start thinking about how to talk about it to my audiences. <laughs> um, so it's that sort of, you do sort of have to look at it, your pictures and your, your presentations um, as, and that's what I think is really lovely, sort of in a prismatic viewpoint, sorry. And that's what I think is what's really lovely about this ramp up at, that you're sort of trying to provide over the next few months um, and, and allowing the artist to sort of just present or pick a, a certain section and clarify in those, that pris, prismatic viewpoint. I hope that's clear. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> I think you know you've know again it's it's about um kind of it's learning that language of pitching what your work is in a very short but clear concise way and i guess you know it's a bit of a you know the unique selling point which is part of honeypot is a really sort of important um element of event finder and i think it's really different and distinctive to the blurb that's presented in the program the unique mm -hmm. selling point for steve and isabel is understanding what the audience is going to uh, come away from or what it or how it speaks to um you know how it how it dif dif differentiates from from other work in that genre so yeah really sort of nailing that unique selling point is is a really great catch in terms of getting someone interested in in investigating in the work uh, a little more um maybe it maybe it might be fun just to kind of ask like georgia and david just to kind of like very briefly give their unique selling points of, of one one work that they're presenting at fringe next year and we'll see how that 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 sort of speaks to isabel and steve um <laughs> where i'm going to throw someone under the bus here um but i'm um, happy to go first that's fine Georgia's happy to go. <laughs> there we go. um i think it's a good a good way to give it an example like for my blurb we'd say like okay yuck circus dead set we're an all-female circus company um, it's all about like australiana rock and roll uh acdc tradies chalk milk the Australian Larrikin identity would be our pitch. Whereas our unique selling point would be more about like, we've made this show to celebrate like iconic Larrikin Australian moments. We're using it to unify our audience after they've been through, you know, a long time in our country. We felt uh, when we made this show that everyone was a bit over it and we wanted to make a way that celebrates, um, you know, who we are and, you know, Australia, you know, moments <laughs> like Shannon Knoll or a bin bin or, you know, that kind of thing. And it's uh, also my, my second unique selling point would be we're an all-female circus company, but particularly with this work, we're trying to kind of flip it where it's not us on stage being like, we're women, we're talking about women's stuff. It's we're presenting a completely different topic as women on stage. So it's the sort of normalising um, this kind of cast and like, uh, I guess identity while presenting something that um, isn't necessarily like gender lensed. So that's kind of our two uh, points that we try to push when we're selling this work. Cool. Thanks, that Georgia. Isabel, Steve, what did you think? 
I mean, <laughs> I mean I, unfortunately, I run a singing festival, so I'm not quite sure that Georgia and I are going to immediately be the best professional match, but I, I want to see it. I'm sold. So that's fun. We'll sing for you. Oh, see, <laughs> let's, let's, we'll work on a sequel. It'll be great. <laughs> And how about you, Steve? Did you kind of get an understanding of George's work a little bit better there? Yeah, and I and I um, have already seen Yuck Circus's uh, one of Yuck Circus's previous work. Previous work. Hey. Um, I do enjoy seeing their work on stage, um, and so um, what I thought was the hook there for me was the flip. And, and Georgia describing the flip. Now that's not necessarily obvious when we, when we might watch it, but that is the sort of undercurrent that maybe I'm looking for um, in, um, in developing maybe a circus audience or a physical theatre audience or just a general audience that is um, aware and, and wants to be seduced in a way. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's nice to have those sorts of points of reference as well. And, you know, like, I loved how you brought Shannon Knoll into that and, like, being able to visualize something through, you know, popular, you know, um, prior knowledge of, of, of things is, is really sort of an interesting um, kind of creative way of, of kind of talking to the work and kind of helping people visualize it um, a, little, a little more as well. David, how about you? What's your unique starting point? <laughs> I've got a few. Uh, so the Alphabet of Awesome Science is a, a scientific race through the alphabet where awesome words inspire awesome science. So that's our tagline. That's the thing that we try and use to say to people, this is the show. This is what happens. Um, and from there, we've got a couple of unique selling points in that the, the show runs in a different order every time. Um, so every show is completely different. Um, and the way it plays out will play out slightly differently for, for every audience. So it's a unique a unique show for each audience. Um, it's a, a race. We have a, a clock on stage that um, counts down from 52 minutes. We have two minutes to explore each word, um, demonstrate a new science demonstration. So around every corner, there's a, a new thing happening. Um, which has audiences sitting on the edge of his seat, watching that countdown, watching us, not knowing what's happening next, always being drawn into the show. So, so they're, they're kind of our, our points that there's, um, you know, it's a, every show is different. It's a race. There's two minutes per word per, per science demonstration. Um, and that usually helps us to explain what the show is to, to, uh, to a, a, a presenter. There's music, there's songs, there's, you know, massive explosions um we can sell it from that point there you go isabel we've got music and songs <laughs> perfect i mean okay, let's talk 2024 what were your, your takeaways from that from that unique setting um yeah i i um i think that that was really clearly explained like any show with a, a solid structure or a solid hook is such an easy kind of concept to grasp onto. Um, um, so it's kind of really great to sort of just be like, this is what the show kind of thematically is, but also structurally speaking, bang, 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 there we go, very clear. Um, yeah, I shall be bringing an eight-year-old, I know. Um, <laughs> <It's cool. laughs> How about you, Steve? Did you, do you think that kind of really spoke to the type of audience that it would work with? Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I would be into from that. I'd be interested in seeing a show, uh, uh, a show where there is a lot of uh, young people in um, in the audience, um, and I would probably then follow up with a conversation with David around um, connecting David to a science festival that happens here in Hobart. Um, and uh, discussing whether uh, that, that has been an opportunity in previous uh, years. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, whether that's Theatre Royal's um, programming contribution to that festival, or whether that's the festival that programs it, then becomes a series of further conversations. Um, but uh, yeah, I suppose my, I suppose in summary, 
Um, I want to see it. Uh, I want to see the interaction between the audience and the and the work, and then um, my thoughts immediately go to partnerships or other people that I think, or other organisations that I think this particular work could be good for. Yeah, and I just love the use of the word awesome all the time. I think <laughs> really cemented how awesome it is, and you come away thinking this work is awesome. So, <laughs> And that's what every, everyone comes up after a show and goes, that was awesome. So <laughs> it's about having that confidence delivery and getting used to being able to repeat in a really succinct way what it is you're presenting and what you want to achieve. And I think that's what Event Finder is really good at benefiting artists with. It's you have that three months to really get the key information in front of the the, the delegates that the, the peruse the the finder and i guess it's really important to sort of um elaborate that it's a live form so if there's any point you do kind of see other artists presenting their their work in a slightly interesting or different way that you kind of want to um you know uh, borrow in a in your own way or or you feel like your work isn't quite presenting itself in the way that you wanted it to, you can always go back into that form and edit it at any time. Um, and it is really, I guess, really important to, um, you know, just, I guess, learn from other artists as well. So really, really sort of looking at everyone else in your genre and seeing how they present work is is perfect way of kind of working out what your identity and style is. Do you, do, you, do you agree, Georgia? I mean, do you kind of look at other artists and, and how they present themselves and kind of get some inspiration and, and ideas that way? I think it's always a great tool to see, um, I guess, what your peers are doing, both in your genre and outside your genre, like figuring out what the differences are. Um, it's just a good way to kind of learn how to become, you know, unique and identifiable yourself. I definitely spent a lot of time uh, early on kind of trying to figure out people's like technical needs that was something I never really figured out um because I didn't want to be that person being like we can go anywhere even though we can yeah we can um <laughs> <laughs> but also kind of trying to make like a a starting point even if that starting point has a big bold letter tagline being like we are super negotiable like we want to come to your community here's a starting point but let us know if you don't have any of this stuff or if you have heaps of this thing um, because we just want to come and make that work. So seeing how other people had worded it, and with circus in particular, there are some things that you can't um, be flexible on. So if you wanted rigging from a venue, it needs to be worded very specifically. Um, so it's very clear because it's a life or death responsibility um, that's shared between both presenter and uh, producer. So there's some things that, you know, I've asked other industry peers, like not looked at their work, but also just like rung up and like, what do you say? Like, can I see your tech specs? Because I want to make sure that it's it's reading very clearly. Um, yeah, I guess that's kind of where I sit on that sort of sharing. Everyone's open to sharing. So if you do have questions, like reach out to people that you may know or maybe you don't know and see if they have any advice for you as well. Also, Honeypot is there to help, eh? Yeah, always, always. Um, and I guess it's a really good sort of segue to the other initiative that Honeypot now does, which is the Passion Pitch. Uh, we brought the passion pitch in last year because um, we just really loved hearing how artists and creatives talk about their work and, you know, things like the hive, you know, we would sit at the hives and we'd listen to, to, to everyone really engaging in a, in a really creative and proactive way with the industry. And we just thought that would be really nice to have prior to the fringe season starting um so that's something we also now offer um it's completely uh optional but it's really nice uh, element to be able to uh to really hear from the mouths of the creatives uh, passionately about what, what the work is and what you want to achieve with it um david i'm i'm gonna is it okay i'm gonna show your passion pitch from last year and then talk a little bit more about what it is and how you can engage uh in, in that element of the program so what I'll do is I'll just share my screen and just show uh, David's passion pitch video. My name is David Lampard and I am the writer, director and designer of You Are A Donut. 
a vaudeville-inspired biological musical comedy adventure that takes family audiences on a fantastic voyage through the human digestive system. You see, you are a donut. That is, you are a great big lump of flesh with a hole through your middle, from mouth to, well, grand finale. <laughs> In this show, two tour guides, biology teacher Aesop A. Gus, that's me, and class clown Dewey Dean, the fabulous PJ Oten, explore each twisty tube and fascinating organ through a series of sketches, songs, and sensational science demonstrations. Think Monty Python, Leonard Woodley, and the Muppets, all smooshed together in a fun science-infused variety hour that combines enzyme-powered ping pong balls with exploding bubbles, puppets, and so much more. Our company produces science theatre through a suite of programs called That Science Gang, a, a series of innovative collaborations between science communicators and theatre creators. This show has been crafted by the same team behind the multi-award winning The Alphabet of Awesome Science, which will be touring nationally this year. We'd love to see you in the audience for the debut of this brand new show and to chat about future possibilities. Yeah, so the passion pitch is a 90 second video that um, is compiled by genre and we released those a couple of days after Delegate find it. So you have obviously, again, a period of time between now and the 13th of January to um, create your own little 90 second teaser pitch video about the work. Um, and, um, you know, that's kind of something you can point delegates to in, in, in correlation with your event finder uh, listing. David, what, what was your approach and rationale for creating your passion pitch last, last year? Yeah, sure. Well, it's all, for me, it's all about the type of information you want to get across um, and being very clear and specific with what the show is. So there's a couple of processes I went through and, you know, you've got to create a script you know, don't just ramble. Um, it's really, really important to know what it is, what information, every second for, it, it flies by and you're not gonna be able to get in every single piece of information that you want to. So you really have to be specific about what pieces of information you want to get in. Rehearse that script, you know, do it to a timer. Um, all of those logical things that you might not necessarily think through. Um, but knowing also that presenting to a camera is not a stage performance. Um, so you're not talking to a thousand people, you're talking to one person in a room. Um, so, and that was probably the most valuable piece of information I got. I used to be a kid's TV presenter. Um, and one of those things was you're talking to one person in a room somewhere. So you've got to be not performing on a stage presenting. It's, it's really important to get that head and shoulders uh, connection through the camera um, to be able to get that personable experience. Um, don't tease, as I said before, you're not teasing about the show, you're being specific and upfront about what it is. Um, for me, it was important to say for that show, which is evolving and, you know, great Adelaide Fringe, you know, I'm bringing it back next year in a very different form, um, knowing what we learned last year. So we'll be creating a, another passion pitch for that. Um, but, um, you know, get it up front. What's the elevator pitch? What's the grab? Um, don't be secretive about the show. You're not teasing audience. You're telling them what they're going to see. Um, for us, it's, you know, it's the Muppets meets Leno and Woodley meets um, uh, uh, the Monty Python, which, you know, hopefully helps us to sum up what the feel, what the vibe is and what the audience is, is going to get. I like to get in a bit of ethic for the company, what that science gang is about, what we're creating as an ongoing um, company as well. So if a, if a presenter isn't interested in this show, they might, you know, flag it and go, oh, well, maybe actually I'd be interested in that other show or one in the future. So um, yeah. Other things, you know, what are the other community engagements that you can add to? We didn't put anything about that in that particular um, pitch. But um, we know that there's now community engagement programs that we'll be able to have that will add on to the experience beyond seeing the show um, in a theatre. So, um, so there's those kinds of ideas that you can add in as well. But be succinct, which is what I'm not being now. Um, <laughs> but be succinct, know what it is you want to say, rehearse it head and shoulders, make sure there's, you know, proper lighting, you're not in a dark room and you're not looking off somewhere else, you know, simple things like that can mean the difference between somebody engaging with what's being said on camera or flicking through to the to the next pitch 
Um, so those basic things are really, really important. Watch it back, you know, re show it to someone else, show the script to someone else um, who's in the industry as well, um, who can give you feedback on, on what you're talking to. Yeah. And I think it's also important to um, just obviously distinguish that there's different scales of um, technical capability in the passion pictures. But I think at its core, yeah. having the information across, they don't all have to be quite as as tailored or as as, as artistically fancy as yours in a way. Um, it's not only delivering the information across, which is most important. Me, but they all shot on a, um, uh, an iPhone. So, you know, there's, we've got, we've got a really cool camera in our pockets now, which is, you know, high fidelity and can produce something pretty easy. Um, everyone can do it. Yeah. And I guess, you know, you can always send it to the Honeypot team for feedback as well. So before you, um, before we upload them uh, on the 23rd of January, if you've got time, send them along to us, we'll take a look. Um, you know, and there's, there's always time to make little tweaks or changes if, if required. Um, I guess in terms of like what key bits of information is important to, to industry programmers, what, what, what do you think should be included in a, in a little short pitch video, Steve? I think um, David's example is exemplary actually. Um, <laughs> um, so thank you, David. Uh, it, it gave me, um, there's a few things to understand in a video. Um, you are looking, you are listening. Those two things can actually uh, put, um, portray and betray you um, in different ways um, uh, against each other, but also with each other. Um, I loved the fact that um, David and his uh, co-presenter were dressed in donut t-shirts. Um, uh, I, but I also, what really got me in that video was um, it, the the it reminds me of so literally just what he was saying monty python lane owen woodley and um muppets, <laughs> muppets thank you <laughs> um uh but but that that is a really key question for me what does it remind me of or how do i relay this information to a person that may not know what, what who hasn't seen it or what they or what they might see, um, and so it sort of just gives me little hooks and ins into how I might be able to promote the work. Um, should I um, help present it later on down the track? Um, so yeah, like I um, I thought the video was an excellent example of um, telling me what the show is without showing me the show um, in ninety seconds. Can I just briefly talk about showing the show in 90 seconds though? Um, if, you, or if you have a work that exists and you are um, wanting to put together a, a passion pitch, um, the last thing I'm interested in is hearing music over the top of dialogue. Um, you need to, again, lead with the actual work. Um, do not um, cover over, um, uh, you know, what someone's saying with the latest top 40 hit. Um, it, it's it's uh, to make it razzle dazzle. Um, it 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 it's it's a little bit like um, saying that you're a comedian and doing stand up, but not telling me a joke. Um, so be really really um, aware of what you're putting on screen, what you're making us listen to, and when you're making us listen to it. Um, and and be like David, uh, be uh, succinct and precise. <laughs> I will absolutely co-sign that final thing that Steve said so hard. Um, I, the amount of times I've been sent something that's beautiful footage, randomly, randomly out of sequence with some music over the top and I I don't I can't do anything with that I can't see what the show is it's you know you could have just shot something fun in a studio and, and sent me that I would much rather see a, even a badly shot camera on a stick here's two minutes three minutes whatever of 
of a work because then I know what I'm what I'm looking at and I'm not judging the camera quality in that scenario I'm oh yeah they're funny oh yeah beautiful singing voice that's really the situation um but I will but but as far as passion pictures are concerned yeah I absolutely that was really excellent very clear I had such a clear visual of what of who the audience would be without that being sort of like labeled in any particular way and is that something that might bump a show up the list of must-sees in terms of when you're looking at scheduling your time here in Adelaide? Is I mean, it, obviously it's a optional touch point that the artist can put in front of a delegate, but um, you know, do you find them useful in terms of deciding actually, yes, I should go see that because it explained it so much more in depth than what the listing on the front end of the website or the event finder did? Um, I think if it's, um, if it's, yeah, like yes and no, in that if it's a, a really good, clear example, like David's wonderful passion pitch, then, then absolutely I, it would 100% bump it for me. But also equally, and, and this is not a negative here, I might look at it at a really excellent one and be like, hmm, that sounds amazing, but now I know that it's not for me. So I wouldn't go, but that's not a bad thing. Like you yeah. don't necessarily want, like I've been to shows previously where I can't tell from the copy um, or the image what I'm looking at and it could go a bunch of different ways. And I've sat down and two minutes into the show, I can be like, oh, I can tell I'm gonna have a great time here, but I am no help to this artist. I cannot engage with this at all because of the organisation I'm at at the time or what I'm looking at, which is not a personal thing. Um, and it's not a judgment call on the quality of the work. It's just information. So something like this where you can get more information in advance is always helpful whether for both of us, whether that means, yeah, I'm going to prioritise seeing this artist or no, I won't be taking up one of these seats that someone else could be taking up. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it's very important, like you say, to um, distinguish that it doesn't have to be all smoke and mirrors. It's just get, delivering that information and understanding that the artists can talk about their work clearly and concisely. Just one final thing, I guess, Steve, is it, um, is it beneficial for you to hear from the mouth of the creative about how they talk about their work? Does it kind of give you an indication of whether there might be a relationship there that you might want to kind of look to investigate in terms of presenting work with them. It helps to have that conversation face to face. It does help to have maybe a, a, an email correspondence if I didn't um, uh, get to see the work or face to face. Um, and and it's and like Isabel said, it's got nothing really to do with um, uh, taste or or even um, you 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 quickly know <laughs> whether it's whether you you can do something with it or not. Um, and and I mean again, taking David's example, um, like I said earlier, um, I would certainly have a conversation with David about maybe connecting them with the uh, science arts cultural festival that happens here in Tasmania. Um, I, and and that, that is putting that work into a little bit of a box, but it's also a critical mass box. That's where people congregate and that's what is happening in Tasmania at that point in time and the type of work that quite possibly they'd be suited for. Um, uh, so it's, it's, um, it would be worthless for me to have a conversation by going, yeah, we'll take it in April when the, uh, when the festival happens in October. Do you know? Like, I'd, it's, it's, um, for me, it's about having that face-to-face -face conversation and thrashing out some of those, those nuances in why maybe it's not for me or us or it is. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's worth remembering, um, as an artist that presenters and 
or arts organizations in general um want want you to succeed and want you to have a good time so if someone is passing on your work or is is saying well I'm interested but only in this particular way or or I, I can only do you know a three night run rather than a week long run the reasons are going to be because the way that the presenter is trying to facilitate that or not facilitate that is to get audiences for you like they're not not only do we not want or not having audiences for us obviously but we also don't want it's horrible performing to an empty room so if we don't think that we can support a work and make you have a really great time again it's not about the quality of it's not a judgment call in any way it's making sure that everything is the right fit so that everyone including the artist has a really wonderful lovely time it's already a hard industry to work in we really like <laughs> let, let's all try and, and do our best to have a, a great experience as much as possible and, I, and I, I do think that sometimes artists can feel understandably feel a lot of pressure to to hustle and to make themselves super adaptable to everyone um and I, and I, I would say to people watching me you don't need to do that um you can stay firm in what's right for yourself and what's right for the show and and other people who are also looking for the same thing will find you and it will be okay yeah i think that's a really good point to uh to clarify there is about that obviously these applications are purely optional and if you feel comfortable about um speaking in front of the camera to sort of you know talk about the work creatively and pitch it it's excellent to have if that's suitable to you but there's also other ways in which you can present information about the show to presenters um and maybe that's kind of a great way to sort of talk about the presenter pack and the touring pack which is something that you might be asked for um after someone's seen the show or if you're talking to someone um you know in a conversation or follow-up uh, approach you might sort of get asked if you can provide a touring pack or a presenter pack um, and you can kind of start working on the presenter slash touring pack during your adelaide fringe season so there's certain bits of collateral and information you can start compiling now during the season and afterwards which will get you to a place where you have a nice presentable pack which really clearly defines what the work is and, and how it's marketed and stuff um george i might just use yours as an example maybe you just sort of talk us through what you've included and, and what your kind of thought process was in terms of what was important to include so i'll just share my screen and show your presenter pack do you want to talk us through um how you compiled this and what you felt was necessary to include yeah, um, I think kind of as a prelude, uh, this is maybe a bit extreme. I spent an unhealthy amount of time on Canva and Photoshop, oh. <laughs> um, but I also feel like I had a lot to say about the company and we've been doing it for a hot minute. So it's like we do have like an immense amount of collateral, immense amount of images and quotes and, and stars and awards. So for me, it was how do I pull all that in one document? Oh, it's so much. Um, I think if you're starting from the other end where you're brand new, um, it doesn't have to be uh, color coordinated and style. It can be um, simple and factual. It's kind of like what you're doing on your event finder listing, but in a kind of compact form for your own show. Um, things that I would recommend is maybe like a brief uh, kind of synopsis on your show or like why you're making it. Um, we've also got on there kind of like a little company info bit as well uh, we've then compiled some like quotes and some stars um, but if you don't have any of that maybe it's from your preview showing or like your first run get the people who have come to see you to write like a little um, you know idea about your show or kind of what they thought just start with something small um, having really good images uh, works well um, I think also like remembering why you have a presenter pack like it's not for your audience it's for your presenters but you also kind of have to sell it to them as well 
So it's like, how can you gear it in a way that's um, helpful for them? Like we were saying before about having like your clear tech specs. This one does not have clear tech specs, has an overview. Um, anything that's like sellable for your show. Uh, yeah, like I said, anything that anyone said about it, if you have awards or stars um, as priority. So maybe in the lead up to Adelaide thinking like, how do you get reviewers in? Like, I hate getting reviewers in. I never actively do it, which is not something I encourage, but <laughs> it'd be something that <laughs> you seek help with with Honeypot or um, maybe there's like a marketing or a PR person that could help you um, kind of make those connections. Uh, this page, yeah, this is at a glance, um, just to give people kind of like a vague idea that, you know, we don't do six shows a day. We do two shows a day, kind of at a push. If you wanted us to, here's our little cast rundown where they're from. So like from that, you can see that we're an interstate cast. I could say that a bit more clearly, potentially, so people understand like the touring, um, I guess, capacity of that. Um, but just stuff that you think that, you know, might be interested, suitable venues. Sorry, I've said we're adaptable. <laughs> <laughs> adaptable in general, but it's that sort of thing. That's the message we want to push with our company is like as regional and country artists, we want to fit into every space. We want to do town halls and dirt. So it's like, for me, that's something I'm working on, on phrasing that better and making it more understandable that, that we're willing to come and see what you got rather than the other way around. Places that we've been before, it might be not just your uh, show that's touring at the moment, maybe places that you've been previously. Um, ignore, yeah, that's all good. Mark Link Collateral, so ways that you would sell your show. It's good to kind of list, um, I guess, like your target market and also like who your show is made for things that you might have, like you've got an Instagram or you've got a YouTube, you've got templates for flyers, um, you know, do you have a website? You don't have to if you're early days, but it's something to kind of have as a tool later on. We've just done ours up, have a look, it's very good. Little, little <laughs> name drop, <laughs> I'm very proud of it. Um, we've, done, we've got teacher resources. Uh, I'm very lucky one of my cast members used to be a high school drama teacher. So that's a resource I could use, um, you know, getting her on board to kind of, get that together um, I'm sure uh, yeah if that's relevant for your show sometimes your teacher resources aren't relevant for your show so you know you don't have to do all this kind of stuff but maybe just like have a look and see what's applicable to you and then how to contact you yeah I think um, the biggest thing for this presenter pack for us is it's written all in our voice I don't know if you can tell um, but <laughs> we have a strong Australian voice. Uh, so we, both with our branding and across our social media and our website, um, but also, also as us as people, it's how uh, we have a strong identifier. So think about like how you're writing these things, whether it's clean and factual or whether it's got your show style and your, your voice as well and kind of choosing a medium or choosing a side, I guess. Um, yeah, perfect. And David, we might just flip to yours very quickly. What, what, what's your kind of, approach to the presenter pack that's provided by by your management team yeah sure so this was put together by um ncm our management group um with words by us as is probably a little bit more factual um and um is specifically for the show um so it's pretty image heavy um we're actually in the redeveloping this at the moment as we head into the overseas market so we're about to put a new one um together um but this is what we use to get 80 um, venues around Australia so far. So um, it's quotes from reviews, um, blurb for the show, key creatives, um, the cast, you know, our histories um, for, for those, the company history and ethic, uh, our touring history um, is a little bit in there, which we're about to, to update. Um, but as um, Georgia was saying as well, um, quotes, you know, what do other people think of the show? What are the awards it's won? Um, the stars became very important. Ours does have the um, the tech specs um, included in that. So at a glance, we know what that show is. We know what we provide, what we expect from a, a theatre um, to be able to make it work, what venues, what spaces it works in, a floor plan, basic floor plan for the show and contact details. Um, one of the things we're adding into that will be all the resources that we've built across the year. So um, the teacher resources that we now have, um, the, the workshops that we can offer, um, the ongoing community engagement that we have with uh, now a pre-show video that um, some 
Uh, venues have started to put up onto their their website as an introduction to the show for um, for people before they come, as well as for schools. So there's all those resources that we're going to put into this um, now as we start to to update it, and we've learnt what works and what doesn't. But yeah, there's all our um, tech specs and and what um, a theatre might be able to expect. And of course, we follow all that information up once we've got a booking or once we're negotiating a booking. Um, with more information um, that can be added to that. But hopefully this is a jazzy way of um, getting a presenter to go, oh, this looks interesting. Um, how would it fit? How can I begin this conversation? So, um, yeah. Excellent. Thanks for sharing uh, both those, Georgia and David. Um, as you can see, very different in terms of um, like the, 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 the size and what's displayed. But again, sort of very key relevant information between the two packs there, which really sort of detail a little bit more about what it is the presenter might be booking. Um, uh, Isabel, what, what's, what do you think is really necessary in a presenter pack or touring pack? And are they useful to you? Um, 100% useful, yeah. And those were both really excellent, excellent examples. Um, I, I think that the... Or again, all of the things that we've been talking about this whole time, like clarity, being clear about what the show is. Um, definitely, if you have reviews, pop reviews in there, pop star ratings in there. If you don't have reviews, if it's an early, you know, maybe this is the first run and, and it can be really hard um, in big festivals in particular to get reviewers to come along. Get, you know, really um, try to get your audience to tweet or put on Instagram. Um, you can get people to like fill out little cute like you know scribble pads of oh I just saw this show la, la, la. any kind of collateral of things that other people have said about your show is really useful um uh, and and good photos for me is just such a real selling point um I think you know it's great to have a really wonderful show that I can put on but if I can't market that show then that's tricky that's really hard that's going to be a, a bit of a problem and it's pretty easy now to get good photos even if you can't afford to pay a photographer which I can get you know starting out some young artists that can be really tricky find your most instagrammy friend who has a good phone like there are <laughs> options now um so just kind of considering things like that I love it personally if um a, a pack links to a, a like a, a short three minute exit of the show that I can watch um and again that doesn't need to be like the most professional quality or anything I just would usually like to see at least part of it um even if that's literally just a couple of minutes just to give me an idea um that's really helpful so yeah just kind of clarity good information um don't stress about being as as flashy as those two beautiful examples were um you don't need to be a canva whiz if it's just the information in a pdf that's also fine um but it, i'm not gonna lie if someone sends me something really flashy i'm i'm like oh, oh <laughs> have a look at this yeah what about you steve what are your do's and don'ts in terms of a presenter um yeah it's not one size fits all but it's actually all the little sizes that make up the big picture. So um, a little leaning from Isabel, I love the, I, I, I might want the information to pass it on in a way. So a three minute, five minute, and then the whole show uh, in, in, in um, what I call cut off footage. So lock off footage, sorry. Um, I don't want it edited. I just, that the full show, I don't want it edited. I just want it from a, one one point of view in the audience and i just want to see what it looks like on stage yeah. um, the five minute the five minute and the three minute or the one minute etc a little bit more like the passion pitch it can be edited but as i've said before be wary of how you edit it um i think um what i loved about those examples uh were considerations around what else the show is bringing um, whether that's uh, education or teachers packs, uh, whether that's uh, community engagement. Um, you don't have to promise the world. You just need to know what um, 
the show is hooking into when it comes to either curriculum or what you're able to do when you're here uh, or there, sorry, at, at the venue or at the festival um, for that short amount of time. We can't, you know, you might be performing three times a day, so, you know, five workshops uh, and is not um, possible. So it's just this sort of, and don't offer the world, offer things that fit into uh, what you and the show wants to say um, and what your skills are. Because, hey, sometimes I might be going, hey, I don't need those that skill development workshop, but I need um, this particular uh, angle that you are proficient in. <laughs> um, uh, also, tech specs. And again, with something like Circus, it's really important... As Georgia has said, you know, um, all of those sort of rigging um, things and safety issues, um, we need to consider and I need to consider them on a piece of paper so I can send them to the operations manager um, and the production team um, at the venue so they can have a look at to see whether it's actually possible. The other thing that's interesting, uh, I don't know whether it was all there or not, um, the bump in time. And um, and how long it takes to set up, and when you and how soon after bump in you are prepared to perform, um, is really um, useful for me, um, and uh, especially for a theatre that um, if we were to buy your work, um, we also then provide a certain amount of staffing that can help you set up, and we need to cost that out. Um, because these are extra costs. Um, if we're buying the work, we're also marketing the work and, and we would definitely use your um, collateral to help uh, do that. Um, we, won't be, we won't be making anything new up. Uh, the only thing we would ask in terms of um, uh, collateral is clean pictures. No words, no graphic uh, interference with the clean pictures, just clean pictures, because then we can start thinking about how we put our branding, uh, uh, overlay our branding across your brand, your work and your, and your branding, <laughs> in a sense. Um, but that goes differently that if we ended up talking about a, 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 a work that you take, you're, you're performing at our theatre and you're hiring our theatre, which means you're taking the risk, but it also means that you're getting the box office, then that is actually a different type of conversation and a little bit of different collateral will be required. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, all excellent considerations there, Steve. And I, like you say, one size doesn't always fit all. Um, so I, in terms of getting collateral together to compile a pack, which can be done after the season. It doesn't have to be done while you're presenting at Adelaide Fringe. This is something you're investing in, in terms of um, compiling something that will help you potentially um, gather more bookings post Adelaide Fringe. I guess it'd be interesting to hear from Georgia and David as to what artists can do to prepare to get the collateral pieces together ahead of coming to Adelaide and then what they can do while they're in Adelaide to get ahead of the, of the, of the, of the, of the game really. So Georgia, what would your tips be in terms of preparing? I think my two cents would be, I guess like looking at the presenter pack, I see it for us as a marketing tool. It's not the only thing that we have under our belts. So kind of what um, these guys were saying, like we also have our video cuts and we have our images and we have our reviews and we have it all in a media folder along with our plain Jane tech specs where they're really clear and written and there's no Canva editing happening <laughs> over there. Maybe a, a word drop um, picture. But uh, it's that sort of thing of like we kind of like collate it all into one sort of product. So there's, it's, thinking about like, is it early days in the conversation and this presenter just wants to see kind of where you're at or what this product might be? Or is it, hey, we wanna book the show, like send us the, the juicy bids. And so we keep that quite separate um, one. So it's like you're showing them the, the best uh, kind of like marketing version of your show to the presenter where it has it all factually, but it's 
nicely presented and it's like kind of you're still sort of in that sell mode and then it's like yep we're sold let's do this it's like here's all the images and like here's all the reviews but I'm not sending them like our entire folder of 100 dead set photos it's like that kind of thing of having like a clean clean small version and then like a let's let's do this version um I think in the lead up like yeah if you're able to show your show to people before coming to Adelaide and then um, collecting what you can about that, whether that be having a photographer there or your mate with your Instagram phone um, at that showing, maybe it's a photo shoot in the park. Um, how can you collect maybe things from previous shows that you've done or um, previous experiences and kind of, you know, labeling it like company awards or like company experience if you're starting from nothing. So it's like you, I'd assume as yourself as an artist have, have done something before coming to Adelaide um and if not maybe you have like a tagline like best plumber in Melbourne or I don't know whatever it may be <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you've done something in your life that um is worth noting uh otherwise you know you've got your passion pictures or you've got um ways to write about yourself that shows your personality and your performance um not so much experience but you want to make people trust that you've got this and that you're credible and that people want to see you do some stuff so how can you best uh I guess display that as you go along yeah and what, what David what if you're so if you're thinking about oh I must put a, a pack together uh, but I'm in the middle of my season I mean what kind of things can people do during their season to gather yeah um I mean yeah it depends on whether you're presenting a new show or whether it's a show that is established and you have those assets so it's whether you have them or whether you're collecting them um so we make sure that we absolutely have a photographer come along to to fringe um but we also make sure that when we're touring we we get shots in theaters as well so um you know we're in gluttony when we do shows so getting getting shots in a tent is different to having you know live show shots, and that's also different to having studio photographs as well. So that you know create your hero images. So there's there's a sequence of um, different images that you need. We also have a, a trailer for the show which we put together, which goes into um, the resources that we give to um, different venues. So you know getting video copy of the show is very important to us as well. But again, it's 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 cost. But if you're wanting to tour then you kind of have to put in these um you know expenses have to be a part of of what you're doing it, it, nothing happens for nothing um so unfortunately there are some you know expenses but there are people you can contact you know there's the 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 facebook page to talk and see who's using who to do what and who's taking photographs and um there's always going to be someone who who you can tap into to do stuff um, and in the initials, you don't necessarily need to have the whole show, um, you know, if you can't afford to get the whole show shot. Um, I mean, we do have cameras, we can put them up, you can put it on your phone. <laughs> We've shot whole shows on our on our phone before. Um, but the, you know, maybe pay for someone to come along and get some close up imagery that you can use for to create a trailer or to create other information, other assets as well. Um, it's getting those reviews, you know, have a media release, um, have your media kit together. Um, make sure that you're sending information to people and contacting and, and talking to other people as to who uses who, um, making those personal contacts. Um, for us, because we're science, um, uh, science infused, we talk to the Sunday Mail and we write articles for them for the chill pages, for the kids pages. Um, so it's a sort of a sideways way of getting the show known as well. Um, but sorry, I'm going off track but the assets <laughs> you know generating those assets getting that media release getting the reviews to come along it's horrible it's sucky it's terrible to have to you know please come see my show because I want your review um but you kind of have to do it you kind of have to be active to to make that happen because there are so many shows happening but um as George was saying too the Google Drive or Dropbox um folder which has all those assets and you can put in there and start to build is really really important as well so that we can have you know uh, something we can give to a presenter and say here's our five hero shots that you can pick from here's you know 20 shots from the show which you can use for social media um clean you know as you say without all those other bits and pieces all over them here's our um, logos for the show for the company in this folder here's all of these assets here's the marketing you know 10 page marketing document that has the short blurb the long blurb um the bio the tagline that you can use for the show 
um, how to use the logo, you know, all those other details as well. It's important to, to build those assets that presenters can go, oh, this, this group knows what they're doing. They have all the assets sitting there and they can we can roll out with this show now. Excellent. I've just got something to add, sorry. Just made me think about it is um, during the festival, knowing how to speak about your show to people in person is a is a big uh, must. And it's not so much like you have to do your elevator pitch, like you have to just like blurt out, um, you know, your show in detail, but just being able to explain it. I recently had a kind of like mentory meeting with a bunch of emerging artists and ask that question like oh so what's your show about and they're like oh my friend can explain it better than me and it's like okay well number one learn how to talk about your work plus they're cotton socks but it's that thing of like I mean like even just if you have a large cast or you have somebody else you're working with making sure they're across the main points of your show just in case they're at the artist bar with somebody and they're you know asking that question of like what's what are you doing and you can't just be like oh I don't know my friend knows better talk to them You, you need to be able to casually express yourself and um i guess even passionately talk about your work it's something to practice um if it doesn't come naturally to you excellent points everyone and i think we've discussed a lot obviously during this session and it might feel a bit overwhelming and you might feel that i've got so much to do between now and my season but it's worth knowing that these are all just things that you can do along the way they're stepping stones you don't have to do everything that we've outlined today. We just want to present how you might be able to invest in your season ahead. And these are things that you can start to slowly learn how to do. Um, so if you do come away from the season, you know, with, with some great new images or some quotes from people, then you're already uh, halfway there to, you know, getting a pack together. Or if you just trial out a, a little pitch video for the passion pitch this year, um, just to kind of get some experience about how you talk to the work, then you've already kind of ticked that one off the box. So these are all just things that you can do in the lead up to and during this season, which will hopefully benefit you in the long run. But essentially what we want you to do is present the best work you can during Adelaide, because uh, that in itself will serve uh, you best along the way. Um, so before I wrap up, is, is there any last thoughts or considerations that, that our artists um, should maybe think about or be aware of just to summarize um, before we wrap up. Um, Isabel, anything from yourself? I think really, um, I, for me, it goes back to what we were saying at the very start, which is that, you know, all of this is about connection and connecting with people. Um, so, you know, don't stress yourself too much. Just talk honestly and clearly with people and yeah. Yeah. Steve, how about you? Anything? Yeah, lead lead with your work, and 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 because that's your calling card, really. And um, and and lead with the clarity of thinking um, uh, around how you want to present it elsewhere. <laughs> Excellent advice. David, how about you? Any, any last thoughts or considerations? Yeah, look, especially for early stages, um, throw yourself in, look at what's on offer, look at, um, you know, tuning into any video um, that you might think might be vaguely suited to your work um, and that might give you some context and some insight into the process. It's a lot. It's a lot. And it took me a couple of years to be able to work out what this process is and I'm still learning you know to, to how to do this especially talk to other artists I mean I think for the majority we're we're all pretty approachable so if you're not sure how to do something look at someone who's working in the same or similar industry or not you know someone who's doing something different but doing it well um, because the bones are the same so you know talk to other people ask questions um, and be clear with what it is that you want, your intent, what it is with, you know, end line, what do you want to do with your show um, as well? Because that will give you a sense of what information you need to get. Perfect advice. Yeah, definitely fall upon your, your, your colleagues and your co-workers and artists as well who are also coming from the same place or have come from the same place. Georgia, any, any last thoughts from yourself? Yeah, I think I'd just like to echo that. It's um, And what was said earlier is that everyone's 
on your side and they want to see you succeed. I think with this industry in general, um, we're incredibly lucky that most people are giving in kind. It's it's kind of the way that our work works. Um, and just with the festival as a whole and with the Honey Pot program and yourself, Andy, is that you have access to a wealth of resources um, and people that will help you or people that can give you direction on who will help you um, with anything that you might need help with. Wonderful. Well, um, I'm so happy to have uh, been able to chat to all four of you this morning. And um, it's been wonderful to really sort of dig in a little bit to, to what you can really sort of look to achieve in your season ahead. So um, thank you once again from Isabel, Steve, Georgia and David. Um, lovely, lovely kinds of thoughts and considerations there. Um, and yes, please do like dig into the event finder, uh, tweak it if you need to. Submit a passion pitch to the Honeypot team before you uh, before we upload it. We're always happy to kind of give some feedback and help you through that. And um, yeah, Leslie, um, if there's any questions you have, uh, we're more than happy to kind of answer them at any point along the way. Uh, but otherwise, we'll see you at Adelaide Fringe and the Honeypot events where we can start to talk to people in person. Um, so without further ado, thanks once again to everyone. And um, thank you.